So here we have um, the extreme case of a lumper, somebody who has um, collected lots and lots of things in within one coat and therefore has lots of big coats, so to speak, coats with high frequency. And we need to do something about that. Yeah, so we pick on that first code here, children know how to work, but it has 2D quotation. And I'm showing you what you need to do if you have coded like that, or if some codes are like uh, that. Yeah, and don't wait until you have 66 quotations uh, lumped together, or even more than that. Uh, you will see we have to review all of them and we have to recode all of these quotations. Um, I take away the um, side panel now to make the list a bit uh, tinier and we have more space on the screen. The focus here where I'm going to take apart now is the but factor. Um, the children are hard work, that's covered with some other codes, but now with in those quotations, I want to focus on the but factor and see what's good about children and how we can subdivide uh, those 30 quotations in um, basically reasons maybe still why we have children, even though they are hard work. That means we do have to review all of these 30 quotations and um, there are different ways of doing that. Yeah, we can either read it on screen or we can um, export the data. So here this shows you how to read on screen within the context of the data and the codes that are also attached there. You go through and read through the quotation, take some notes. That's one way of doing it. And the other way is if you rather like to work on paper or just um, read it in editor so you don't have to click all the time. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, just kind of focus on certain aspects. Here I, I know the data so I know what to look for. So here <clears throat> um, I'm going to mark some of the texts here soon may make my life richer and filled with laughter. So you could actually note that down as one of the uh, positive aspects um, and just take some notes for the moment. Here we have um, a statement here, every, ruined everything in the nicest way. So it in a way gave me, you know, it's a difficult statement to kind of put into something, but maybe the positive emotion that a child uh, gives us here. So if we move on, um, the most challenging but rewarding job, so we have keep in mind a reward. It wouldn't trade it for every, anything, so trade reward, kind of very similar already. And um, so we now have the next quote and see what we get here. A sense of fulfillment in life, so we have the uh, issue of fulfillment again. And um, yeah, here we always have to look again. Life is much fuller and richer. It should be here in that next um, statement. So we had uh, fuller and richer already comes up again and again. Yeah, and the more you go through, um, things just start to repeat itself, so we can start collecting things again, but now on the sub-level. It's about pure joy, so we have positive emotions again. Um, so what's here in the um, the next one? Far outweighed uh, that many times, so we have um, greatest joy, we have this rewarding um, factor here again. You wouldn't trade it. Uh, again, a minute, so the trade of the reward we have coming up again and again. I'm just going through a few more quotes to show you that now, once you read it, focused on one particular aspect, you, know, you have kind of pre-collected something or made a pre-selection, and now um, it's much easier to find uh, subcodes in that sense. But as I mentioned, don't overdo it. Don't wait until you have... Uh, until you have a hundred quotations to find your subcodes.
So when we're going highlighting here something in that quotation, so it's, like as I mentioned, I have to, I'm re-talking through what I recorded before because I hate doing it again. Um, so we now look to a few of the quotation, jotted down some ideas for, for subcodes. And now we can enter them here in our code list, but we could also open the memo manager and then enter the codes here. So I'm creating a new memo, which is called code list. And there I just uh, write down my sorts. And I'd like to do this here in the um, memo manager because uh, I can now add the prefixes, either with columns or underscore, whatever you prefer. And you can do work with copy and paste. Yeah? And you don't uh, have to retype that all the time. Uh, when you add the code. So what did we have? We had fulfillment. Then, oh, I actually don't do copy and paste here. I retyped it, virtual life. Um, but if you have, uh, you know, more codes, you can do copy and paste for the prefixes. Rewarding and rewarding trade-off. Yeah, we also don't, remember you have your, your definition fields. You can always then describe what you mean with a certain Term. So we have yeah, but positive emotions. Um, we leave it like that. This four codes is just about pointing out how it works, how you create subcategories, and saving the memo uh, now in a minute. I'm just, I think I'm thinking about whether I missed a fifth one that we that we came uh, came about uh, or across. <coughs> But I think I kind of couldn't remember a fifth one, so um, so now I'm saving the memo. And under miscellaneous, you do have an option to create codes from selected memo. And now here they are. We imported four codes into our code list. Yeah. Now we don't have the main category name yet, so I start renaming that again using also capital letters doing two empty spaces, you see that. So if I now press F5, F5 is for resorting the code list, then it's all sorted in the same order. And now I can also set a color, so then I can let see everything that is has a color, is already sorted and structured, and those without a color, they are um, black. And now I'm noticing that uh, I've only three subcodes, but we had Four before, notice that a bit later, because I've misspelled it. So that also speaks for using copy and paste for the prefix. Uh, so this cannot happen. So now I'm renaming their hard work, but hard but work, yes. So hard work, but and give it a color as well. Press F5 to resort. So um, to get it into my code list and give it a color. So now I do have my category code with 30 quotations and I have four subcodes, but they're all without content. So what I need to do now, I need to go through all 30 quotations and drag drop the subcode onto the main code. Yeah, and I think the first one here was rewarding, but I don't read it now, so I'm just drag dropping so you can kind of see the the idea behind it, um, and it, it doesn't fit the proper context now. Um, so you go through all of these quotations and drag drop, exchanging the main category for um, the subcategory. So what I'm actually doing now here, show you a little trick. Um, I'm creating code families anyway for for categories. And code families, their purpose is always to be set as filters. So I've, I'm setting a global filter now here. And you see in the margin area, we only have now the hard work but codes and none of the other ones. So we can't drag drop it onto a wrong code um, if it's very crowded. So now it's very easy to see and you can drag drop uh, onto it. So we don't want to have the main category code standing there next to the subcode because the code family basically collects this collects all of the quotations again in case you need all the hard work but um, together. 
So now you see here the main category code is emptied out and the content moves into the subcodes. Yeah, and then of course you have to do this for all 30 quotations. It might be that that not all of the 30 quotations now already fit into your subcode, then just leave it in the main category code. Yeah, remember we do this not after everything is coded, we do this after the first point of saturation, after you have no further ideas about codes. So you can um, now continue to code and maybe some of the subcodes fit and um, and then you come across some sentences that are hard word budget, but you don't know where to put them yet. So just put them into the main category code. Use that for collecting again. And once you have 8, 9, 10, 12 quotation collected there again, review it. And now it's much easier if you have collected a few instances of something to, to think of fitting subcategories. Maybe you have to rename the existing ones. Now maybe you can add a new one. So it's more than one cycle. Yeah, we have seen the term first cycle coding um, before, that is the first cycle, but now we're going through a second cycle and you probably need a third and fourth cycle. Yeah, once you move on and and on. And um, yeah, we had the hermeneutic cycle here again because with every further cycle you come closer to what you actually want to represent here. Um, and so there is the general idea of hermeneutics we do see also in this process a general um, analytical strategy.